Looking very sharp, Jim Miller. Got a job interview. <laughs> that body belongs to uniform. Don't fight it. Unless one of the others wants them, there's not much happening this morning. Just check them over. Just make sure they make sense and the spelling's okay. Right, Sarge. The exciting world of CID, eh? You don't need a hand, do you, Tosh? No, not for me, thanks. Sorry. Oh, Jim, you got a minute? There's a Vicky McBride in the front office. Says she's been bothered by some bloke she wants to talk to somebody up there. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. Court appearance. Where is everyone? I'll do it. What's the problem? I don't know. But she says she's been warned about this man. His name's Dennis Ward. So you know him then? Not really. I'm a nurse. His mum's one of my community patients. And that's what brought you into contact with him? Well, not until recently. He's been in prison. Right. But now he's out? Yes. PC Quinnan said that you mentioned a warning. A psychiatrist called Sally Forrest came to see me about two weeks ago. She warned me to stay away from Dennis. Did she say why? She said he was a patient of hers and that he might be a danger to me. And now he's pestering you? I went round to see Mrs Ward about two days ago and he was there. It was really creepy. He kept asking me things. I just tried to get done as quick as possible and get out. What was he saying? He was just asking me about his mum. I wouldn't mind normally. It, it's just that with the psychiatrist, I, I didn't know what to do. Did he threaten you or touch you or damage your property at all? No. Then I'm not sure what we can do either. Well, what do you usually suggest in situations like this? To report it if and when anything does happen. I've had two silent phone calls. Then I suggest you contact BT's nuisance call unit. So I'm just meant to go home? And contact us if you need to. The psychiatrist struck me as a serious professional. She wouldn't have approached me without good reason, and I do live and work on his doorstep. Can't you at least have a word with him? And say what? I don't know. Just tell him to leave me alone. Come in. Come in. Excuse me, sir, Sarge. Something's come up, but I'm not sure what to do. I'll try it. Um, well, there's, there's a nurse downstairs called Vicky McBride. She's been warned about a local man who's just got out of prison. She wants us to speak to him. Warned? By who? A psychiatrist named Forrest. She called it an official warning. Sally Forrest? Yes, Sarge. You know her? I know Sally Forrest from my child protection days. If he's a patient of hers, he's a sex offender. That's a speciality. Right, but all he's actually done is hang around outside her house and ring on her doorbell. She also had a couple of silent phone calls. OK. What's the man's name? Ward. Dennis Ward. Is the girl still here? Yes, Gov. Why don't you give her a ride home and see if this Ward bloke's still about? And if he is? I'll size him up. Yeah, Jeff, be diplomatic. We need something concrete to warrant our getting involved. It's just over here. You said this bloke's mum's one of your patients. Maybe she'll have a word with him. I don't think so. Why not? It's not that sort of family. Anyway, it's my job to look after her, not the other way round. Well, that's very generous in the circumstances. Really, it's just the way it is. Dr. Forrest wouldn't tell me what he was in prison for. Neither would his mum. No. Do you know? I haven't seen his record. That's Ward there, that's him. Oi, you. Oi, stop, I want a word with you. What, me? Dear Staley, what are you doing outside Vicky McBride's house? I just wanted to talk to her. No harm in that, is there? Well, it depends how you go about it. I'm not bothering her, am I? You tell me. You've been phoning her up. You want to do this down the station, eh? 
Get your hand off me. I'm inviting you down to some else to answer some questions. Or what? Don't bug me about, Ward. I know who you are. I want to know about these phone calls to Vicky McBride. You don't know me from Adam. If she's getting weirdo phone calls, that's not my problem. Right, I'm arresting you on suspicion of making malicious phone calls. <coughs> you do not have to say anything. But it may harm your defence if you do not mention when question something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. You can't do this. I just got out. More fool you, mate. All right, I want you to sign here, here and here. You going to interview him? Not straight away. I want to do some background checks first. Right, George, can you take through number three, please? Sarge, this way. I checked his record, Sarge. He's not a sex offender. He did time for GBH. So? I thought you should know. What's your point, Jamila? I just wondered why you nicked him, Sarge. I asked him about phone calls. That's all I said. He said weirdo calls, which means he already knew about them. If Sally Forrest says his trouble, is trouble. You said Forrest works with sex offenders. She does. That's not what his record says. All right. Phone her up. Go and see her. But I'm telling you, if she's involved, he's a pervert. Sally Forrest? Yeah. WPC Jimmy Blake. Hi. Uh, we'll go to my office. You said on the phone this was about Dennis Ward? Yes, he's been arrested. What for? On suspicion of making malicious calls to Vicky McBride. Did Dennis put you on to me or was it her? Vicky said you thought Ward was a danger. Is he? That's not a question I can answer yes or no. In his record says he did time for GBH. How did you come into contact with him? He was suffering from depression in prison. I didn't see him because of his crime, if that's what you mean. We got involved in this case because my detective sergeant respects your opinion. DS Jeff Daly? Oh, yeah. He says you're an expert on sex offenders. Yes. Is that the threat Ward poses? Um, I really can't get into areas of patient confidentiality. Professional standards come into play. But you told Vicky McBride. No. I said that Dennis had developed a fixation with her, and that might be unsafe. And to avoid him if she could. But you won't say why? No, because that might involve things Dennis has told me in confidence. That's a very fine line. Yeah, it is. But uh, his medical records are confidential just like yours and mine. You must have been here before. No, actually. Through there. I'm glad Jeff Daly thinks my opinion is worth something. But that may be because I've given him answers he wanted. At least in the past. This time I'm not sure I can. Where is Dennis now? In custody. How's he taking this? Protesting his innocence. So, in fact, you've come looking for ammunition? No, what we're looking for is help. The help I can offer is for Dennis. He already thinks people are out to get him, and you don't want to fan those flames. What I can do is come down and give him a psychological assessment. Yeah, thanks. But it's all right by me, but we have to have his permission. Yeah. Somebody wants to see you, Sally Forrest. What for? Psychological assessment. Call the doctor and did your dirty work for you. She came off her own bat. Yeah, sure. Are you ready? She is. Uh, excuse me. We have to have your permission before a psychological assessment can be made. Really? Then I say... No. She's wasting her time. I'm not interested. Right then. We interview. I don't need a solicitor. I don't need a psychological assessment. All right, if you're so on top of things, tell us about the phone calls to McBride. I don't know about the phone calls to McBride. But when I asked you in the street, you said weirdo phone calls, so you did know something about them. I only know what you know, that you got them. And how would you know that? My mother told me. How did she know? McBride told her. Look, I know why I'm here. I'm not stupid. And why is that, Dennis? Because of my record. Look, I lost it in the street. I'm sorry, but I just got out. 
I'm a bit edgy. Why are we outside Vicky McBride's house? I just told you I wanted to talk to her. What about? I've been locked away. I wanted to know how my mother's been. McBride won't talk to me. Why is that? I don't know. You've not been there, Dennis. Maybe your mother needed help. We don't need help. You don't need preaching at. What do you mean preaching at? McBride. She's been preaching at her. She's got religion and my ma doesn't need that. Did you make anonymous phone calls to Vicky McBride? And don't you listen? Well, did you? No. I went round there to talk about my mother. It's got nothing to do with phone calls. What is it to do with then? Look, I ran off. It was the wrong thing to do. I'm sorry. Interview terminated at 11.52. Thanks. Can I go now? Thank you. Come on then, I've got all day. Left. We're releasing you, Dennis, but understand this, I don't want anything to happen to Vicky McBride. Yes, mate. Don't get smart. I mean what I say. Right, okay. Met your type before, mate. Think you've got everybody fooled, but this time we're one step ahead of you. Don't forget that. What does that mean? We know you told the psychiatrist all about it. What she said. You've got no right, mate. She's got no right. No right to say anything. Stay away from Mike Bride. Then it can be our little secret, eh? What was that about, Sarge? Ready for lunch. Was that about Forrest? I don't want him to think he's Condors. I know men like him, they've no respect. The only thing he understands is a show of force. But Sally Forrest seemed to think that force might exacerbate the situation. I don't care what Forrest thinks. I can take it or leave it. It's up to us to stop him. Before he does what, Sarge? Whatever Sally Forrest won't tell us about. Sarge. A Vicky McBride just called. She said she'd had another phone call. A threatening one. When? A couple of minutes ago. She can't have. Ward was here in the station. have got the call logged at 12.08. Which is about nine minutes after he walked out of here from a call box on the south side of Ward's estate. Could he have got there in time? He could if he ran. If he's that single-minded. Jamila, it's Ward. We know it's Ward. I'm not saying it isn't, but then I'm not saying it is either. All we've got is a time and a phone box. We could put a tail on him, Gov. What about surveillance on the phone box? Assuming he uses the same one. Whoever it is, use that phone box. That's what we know. We've got a time and a phone box. Well, that's fine if phone calls are the only thing he's got in mind. Phone calls are what we're responding to. I got a bad feeling from him. I dread to think what's going on in his head. Just stick to facts. If you want to keep this proactive, mount a surveillance on the phone box. That's as far as we can go. Don't get me wrong, Sarge, but I'm surprised you've let him get under your skin like this. He's a rape threat. I know he is. You don't think Ward's gonna leave us at phone calls, do you? Men like that can't stop themselves. If he's shot out of Sun Hill, hell-bent on making that phone call, it looks like a reaction to us. I told you, he doesn't need a reason. But we don't want to provoke him, do we? Maybe we do. Where are you going? I'm gonna provoke another call. What are you doing here? Mrs. Ward asked me. You're not supposed to be here. Where's Dennis? Out. I did ask before coming. Who is it? I need to come in. Who's that? 
It's the police. I'm D.S. Daly, son I'm looking for Dennis. He's out. And you are? She's his mum. Do you know where he is? Do you know where he is, Mrs. Ward? I sent him back. Like right where? To complain. You'll see. To son L. Will you tell Dennis from me? He can complain as much as he wants. I'm watching him. And if he puts one foot wrong, I'll have him back where he belongs. Out. Go on, get out. I You're coming too. I can't. I'm working. Get her assigned to somebody else. It's not just that. What then? That's my business. Not if it puts you in danger, it isn't. Get your coat. I'll see you tomorrow, Mrs. Ward. Do you be all right? How dare you speak to her like that? How can you trust somebody like that? She told me Dennis wasn't going to be there and he wasn't. Is this your normal time to see her? No. So she's already asking for extra visits. Doesn't that make you wonder? She's a patient. I tell my patients to ring me if they need to. You think it's perfectly innocent, don't you? But next time it might not be. What if the son's there next time and he won't take no for an answer? What then, eh? Get a colleague assigned to her. Or better still, two, so they can both go and see her. I came to the police so I could carry on working. That's why I came. So take my advice. I thought this would be over when they traced the call. Vicky. You know the psychiatrist that came to see you? Yeah. She specialises in sex offenders. Is that what he is? Maybe. I think he is. All right. I'll speak to the district sister about Mrs. Ward. But I can't stop seeing the rest of my patients. They rely on me. What were you doing with Vicky? I've just been round to Ward's flat. Vicky was there. What? His mother asked around. Fortunately, Dennis wasn't there. Why did she go? Well, she's got an overdeveloped sense of duty. She'll not do it again. So now what? Watch the phone box. Call me if you want me. I've got to sort something out. Where is he, Dave? Oh, he's in there, sir. I understand you have a complaint. Yeah, I do. One of your officers, Dealey. He's been pestering me. I'm listening. He stopped me in the street when I wasn't doing anything. Pushed me over, arrested me, threatened me in this station and then comes running and has a go at my mother. So this is a complaint about the officer's conduct during an arrest, is it? The arrest was wrong in the first place. And why is that? Because it's all down to a prison psychiatrist saying things she's got no right to say. The people have got no right to listen. Like your sergeant. A prison psychiatrist? Yeah, so I got a record. That's no, no cause for this aggro. He pushed me over and threatened me. How did DS Daly threaten you, Mr Ward? He said he'd spread it around. What the psychiatrist said. I don't want people telling lies about me. Because I haven't done anything and they know that. That's why they had to let me go. I'm that obvious, am I? <laughs> I've got more patients to see. I won't be able to activate the trace thing if anyone calls. Well, maybe I should come with you. It's just around the corner. It'll be fine. It's no trouble. No offence, but I don't want a police escort. That sort of reputation does more harm than good around here. Dennis Ward made a complaint about me. Yes. It's garbage. He's just trying to divert attention away from what he's up to. Really? You don't think it attracts attention to him instead? Be diplomatic. It's the first thing I said to you. Be diplomatic. Dennis Ward's trying it on. You know he is. What I know is that Monroe is investigating a complaint against you. That's what makes the man so dangerous. He thinks he can manipulate the truth, play the victim. The truth is you haven't got anything on him, have you? He says that you threatened to disclose confidential information from the psychiatrist. Did you? I don't have any confidential information from the psychiatrist. Well, fine. That's good. Try and remember that. Stick to the facts. Dennis Ward, enough. If this bloke is out to make trouble for you, so be it. Just don't rise to it. Sir? Jamila? Sir? 
Was any rough stuff this morning when D.S. Daly arrested Ward? No, sir. Ward fell over, but that was an accident. Excuse me, sir. Ward's made a load of allegations to Inspector Munro. He's saying that Jeff assaulted him, threatened to disclose confidential information and harassed his mother. What have you got to say to that? So, it's not true, sir. And you can back that up, can you? You were with D.S. Daly the entire time that he was with Ward. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. Good. Now, I know you two are not a regular team, but I want you to try and get him to calm down. He's going at this like a bear with a sore head. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be on surveillance with McBride. She's not at home, Sarge. Well, where is she? On her rounds. When did you last see her? About an hour ago. Right. If she's back, I want you down there straight away. Sarge, did D.I.D. can have a word with you? Yes. Why? Well, he had a word with me, too. Not there. Don't worry about it, Ward's mother told me he was coming to make a complaint. When? When I was in the flat talking to her, you were in the car. But one of the things Ward complained about was you harassing his mother. Uh-huh. Well, how did he know that? He must have been watching. She said he'd come to make a complaint. He must have been watching all the time. He could have been watching Vicky when I left her. Tell Cat of St. Polly down there. Give the name of the witness. She went without it. Yes, Sarge. Jamila, hang on a sec. Were you dealing with a Vicky McBride earlier? Yeah, I'm on my way there now. Yeah, well, she's in St. Hugh's. She's taken a beating and they think she's been raped. I've sent Polly down there. Come on, Jamila, now. We'd better go to St. Hugh's, Sarge. Vicky's in A&E. What for? Rape and assault. Excuse me, could you tell us where Vicky McBride is, please? Oh, yes, just in the bed there with the curtains drawn. Thank you. How is she? Traumatised. The doctor's given her a sedative. Did she say anything? Nothing coherent. She was pretty drowsy by the time I got here. Nothing about who did it? No, but the doctor said that she talked about something covering her head. I don't think she could see. As soon as she says anything, let me know. Why'd you let her go? She insisted, so. You should have stayed on her. What's the point of being warned in advance if we're not going to stick with it? I was put on the phone box, Sarge. No one said follow Vicky. I told you this was about rape. Not phone calls, rape. And we should have stopped it. You still reckon we've got nothing? You don't have half what you can give God. So you knew he was violent? Don't know what, Dennis. Don't know what, Dennis! Don't know what! What's in here?